Hello and welcome to Tats Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak and today I'm going to show you how to work with the gradient map adjustment layer. Now this is one of those adjustment layers that you might not use all the time or maybe you haven't even tried using it at all but it's definitely something that can be used for many things. I'm going to show you in this example how to use it to create a special coloring on a photo but it can be used for creating special treatments and effects and use it in lots of different projects. So I'm going to select it from the adjustments panel which is here and it's at the bottom right so that's the last one in the adjustments in this uh, collection. So I have the properties panel now open and that shows the additional options for the gradient map adjustment layer. So first of all we have here is a gradient and then we have two options, dither and reverse. Reversing will almost look like we are inverting the photograph's colors, but let's just understand first of all what happens with the gradient map. So by default we have a black and white gradient which matches the colors on this gradient to the brightness levels of the image. So in this case, the dark shadows in the image will be applied with a black color. So black color will be applied to these parts of the image. And then we go to the highlights and the highlights will use white colors. And the midtones will be uh, this 50% uh, gray. So when we use this gradient with the gradient map adjustment, it's almost exactly the same as using a black and white conversion. So it can even be used for that. And then we can always click on this uh, uh, drop down and choose different gradients. We have many gradients here and just to see what happens, if I choose a different one, we can see now these colors will be applied to the image. If I choose another one, again, it will change uh, based on the colors we have in our gradient. Now, with this feature, we can really create lots of very interesting effects and uh, we can customize what we want to use for the image. So let me just select one of these uh, pre-made uh, gradient maps that I created for this image, which creates a very interesting uh, coloring effect on the photo. And that's not all because we can always use blending with the adjustment layer. That's the great thing about having the adjustment on a separate layer that we can apply blending to it. And uh, if you're not familiar with blend modes, you can always go through them very quickly and easily by holding down Alt and Shift and then press plus and minus and that will cycle around all the available uh, blending modes. So you can see the effect of each of them. So you can really find very interesting uh, mixtures of blending mode and uh, the gradient map adjustment layer. Like this one, the lighter color looks, I think, very good. If I show you before and after, it really adds an interesting tone to the whole image. But we can go further and check others, like overlay will create this very cool edgy look plus adds that interesting color toning that we created with the gradient map. So now that we know how to work with the gradient map, let me show you how to actually create a gradient like this uh, that I used in this image. So I'm going to click on the gradient and then I will get the gradient editor where I can customize the gradient itself. Now, first of all, we have an option to choose between solid and noise. Let's just see what happens if I set it to noise. It will create a bit of a chaos in the image, but it can also be used for specific things. Um, and you can always change the roughness, so you can tone it down a bit, or you can add a lot of uh, noise in the, in the gradient. And that will obviously create a very interesting, I would say, abstract effect. But as I said, it can also be used for things like this one, I think looks quite nice. And obviously we can always change the colors around as well. So if you have the roughness set to zero, then you will have almost like a monotone effect, like a sepia effect, which, as I said, can be useful if you are looking for this. But if you increase the noise, then you can always uh, play around with randomizing it, and then you will always get different effects. I 
quite like to play around with this and of course you can always apply blending to it or reduce the opacity of your adjustment layer just to tone down a bit this artistic effect but let's just go back to the solid mode so I choose gradient type solid where we have these color stops and in between the color stops we have these nice uh, transitions between the colors so if I want to get rid of color stops I can just drag them down and then we will have less and we actually went back to the default black and white uh, gradient now if I move the black here that's the black color stop with that I say to Photoshop to use the black color for anything that has this tonal uh, value um, so anything that is 35% um, bright that will be turned to black and anything below that will be completely black and anything on top of that will have a nice transition from black to white if I increase that I will say that what was originally 50% gray in the shades of this image uh, or tonal range of this image that will be turned to black and anything below it as well so I can increase the amount of black in the image and that will make the image very dark but it can also be used so even a gradient map like this can be used for a very dramatic and epic effect on the image so let's just see before and after so that was before and this is after and that's with using overlay but if I set that to normal blend mode obviously it will look very different but even that look can be used for something so we, ha we will have a very graphic black and white look and of course we can always go back and change uh, the effect so we can see the silhouette of the uh, cyclists uh, better but as I said always try to play around with blending together uh, with the gradient map so if I set it for example to soft light once again we have a really nice uh, effect which increases the contrast and makes it a little bit more dramatic okay let me set this back to normal and click on the gradient once again and then uh, continue explaining what else you can do in the uh, gradient option the gradient editor so we have a balance between the two color stops which is called the color midpoint which we can also move around so not only the gradient stops can be moved around but also you can choose to move the midpoint around so as you can see that will create the transition a little bit differently it will balance it out differently so if I move the midpoint closer to the black point then that will be a little bit less use for the black and more for the transition from 50% gray to white so that's quite useful and if you want to be very specific you can always change the location here at the bottom so now I have the midpoint selected and if I want to set it back to the center I can just type in 50% for that and whenever you select a color stop you can use the same thing so if I want this to be 25% I can quickly set it to that so instead of always using the manual adjustments you can be very specific and add a numeric value to each of the color stops and midpoints but you can also change the color of course if you double click on a color stop or you click on this uh, color option here you can choose any different color so I'm going to just set a color for this color stop actually let me just go back and set a blue color something like that and then I can move this around still which will make uh, the image filled with the same color more because uh, I covering more tonal range with the same color but if I want to I can also add new color stops by clicking on uh, the gradient or below the gradient and then I can set this back to a dark version of the blue so I already have two blues assigned one which is darker and one which is brighter and that already creates a much more interesting image I can then choose to add another color stop and I click on this and I can add a completely different shade to the image something like that which will add an interesting different coloring on the bright uh, parts of the image so that's a very bright um, color I prefer to use it for the highlights because of course if I move it below the other colors then it will become a bit more like an inverted image or like a heat uh, uh, image 
and that's not what I want. I'm going to keep this here on the top and I can even get rid of the uh, white color stop and move this all the way to the top and maybe move the blue a little bit further down or we can also add a bit more contrast by moving the dark uh, blue a bit further to the right closer to the highlights. Now if I want to I can always change the colors at any time so I can add a little bit of uh, magenta or pink coloring in the sky and I can really decide where and how I want to use these colors. And of course once you set up something that you like you can always save it as a preset. All you need to do is really save a preset, uh, a gradient preset. So you can do that by typing a name here and uh, let's just call this blue and pink and I'm going to click on new and that saved the preset there. You can also uh, choose presets from your uh, Photoshop preset library so you can even choose to reset the gradients or you can also choose one of these uh, templates where you will find lots of uh, presets. So that's one thing it's good to know, but you can also save all your gradients into a file which will be stored on your computer and if you use uh, Creative Cloud, Photoshop Creative Cloud, then you can always synchronize these uh, presets and use it on any of the machines that you work with. So I just want to show you that it's available. I'm going to click on OK. There's the option here at the bottom to synchronize my settings. And if I go to the preferences and go to sync settings here, you can see that the gradients is actually one of the options that you can synchronize. And of course, as always, whenever you work with adjustment layers, it will always be completely non-destructive. So you can always turn it off and back on and you can change the opacity very easily to fade it out. And remember, you can always change the blend modes as well. Plus, you have a mask on which you can always draw over and then just hide the effect on specific parts of the image. I hope you found this tutorial useful and give Gradient Map a go. And if you want to learn more about adjustment layers in Photoshop, make sure you join me next time as well here on Touch Plus. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.